What's up Internet, Kevin here with TLD bringing you our review of Halo 4 exclusively for the Xbox 360. Now this is the first Halo title to be developed solely by 343 Studios, since Bungie's departure at Halo Reach. And this is to be the first part of a brand new trilogy entitled The Reclaimer Saga. While it has a number of things in common with Halo Reach, it has become quite clear that the style and design of the original Halo trilogy that many gamers fell in love with is now gone, and has been replaced by something familiar, yet different. As far as core gameplay goes, at first glance 4 has a vast number of similarities to Reach, including no form of dual wielding, a large assortment of familiar weapons ranging from the standard assault rifle to the no longer mutually exclusive battle rifle and DMR, and the armor abilities that received such mixed response before. While core gameplay feels similar, there are a number of new additions and welcome changes, such as an entirely new arsenal of weapons based on Forerunner technology, switched up and rebalanced armor abilities, and class customization options for multiplayer that adds a few more personal touches to your Spartan identity. The addition of Forerunner weapons has led to what is easily the largest variety of weapons in a Halo game to date, not to mention some of the most interesting looking and many of them offer enough differences from past weapons to help them stand out, such as the Bolt Shot's ability to charge up for a shotgun-style blast, or the Grenade's ability to deal constant damage within a zone before its full detonation. The more significant upgrade, however, that makes 4 feel a lot stronger than Reach is its attention and changes to the armor ability system, which feels a great deal more balanced than before. What few returning abilities there are have been changed or weakened, such as the jetpack's reduced flight time, while several have been outright replaced, such as the armor lock being thrown out in favor of a slow front-facing mobile shield, or sprint as a power being replaced by a short-range boost for catching enemies off guard. The execution of these abilities is far better than their original introduction in Reach, and on the whole they feel much more balanced for online play. Now as far as the campaign goes, I will say that it is one of the most disappointing ones to me personally, especially when compared to past installments. This is definitely the shortest campaign in the series, lasting only about 6 or 7 hours for a new player on normal difficulty, and as short as 3 hours for someone who's really experienced and not playing in Legendary. It's also one of the weakest ones plot-wise to me. It comes across a little cheesier than past games, and it also relies a lot on people having read or seen extraneous materials, such as reading the different Halo books. Uh, there's almost no form of referencing who these characters are or certain concepts that we should be familiar with. They just kind of start throwing terms out, and those of us that have only played the games are left feeling a bit lost. Now, one of the good things worth mentioning is that this is by far one of the prettiest console-exclusive games to exist, and the best-looking 360 game to date. Now, while the initial campaign is short, 343 does try to expand the experience through the use of a game's online co-op system called Spartan Ops, in which players assume their own identity outside of Master Chief and play together through a series of light story missions that detail events after the main campaign's end, with more chapters coming out as weeks have passed since the game's launch. While a bit weaker plotline-wise overall, these missions do help to add the campaign length and are a great way for less competitive players to find a fun way to play online with others. While the campaign overall left me with a meh feeling, I have to say that the multiplayer has shown itself to be a vast upgrade from Reach, though still not hitting the same peak I felt we had back in the first two installments. The game's embracement of the now popular class customization feature for online play, as well as its refined form of armor abilities has led to what I believe 343's intent was, to create an online experience that stays feeling familiar, but sets itself apart from previous entries as a new style of Halo game. Online matchmaking shows a clear favoritism for team-based modes now, and while a number of series standards have returned, some have received some very interesting and very enjoyable facelifts. My personal favorite being the zombie mode, being restyled as flood mode, making it more relevant to the setting's flavor and adding a little more fun and changed appearances for those infected. Alongside these changes in game modes and the addition of classes, there's been some new content for within the matches as well, such as the ability to summon orbital drops in order to gain better weapons when performing well, like summoning a rocket launcher or a powerful machine gun, so you can still be killed before grabbing your prize. Overall, I must say while Halo 4 is definitely not the best in the series, it is a marked improvement over more recent installments, and signals a new form for how the Halo series will be played. Some purists may still find themselves dissatisfied that the series is not returning to its roots in 1 and 2, but those willing to embrace the new changes will find an immensely fun online shooter well worth putting time into. Well, that's our review of Halo 4 for the Xbox 360. If you'd like to pick up a copy for yourself, check out the link in the description for pricing and availability. If this is your first time seeing us, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest reviews and unboxings. And if you'd like an easy way to stay up to date on all of my current thoughts on games I'm playing, whether I'm raging at them or loving every moment, make sure to follow me on Twitter at TLD underscore Kevin. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.